Welcome back, listeners, to another exciting episode of Are You Zobsafe? Today, we are taking a look at Ramia Newfoundland. That's in Canada, you know. Ever heard of it? Greetings, all our loyal listeners. First, allow me to apologize for the delay in getting the newest Zom safe to you. We've had a very busy few weeks, but we're ready to get back on schedule. So from me and everyone but Jay, our apologies. Why wouldn't I apologize? It's just the type of person you are. Well, yeah, but now our listeners are going to think that I'm some sort of egotistical jerk who doesn't apologize. For all of you who don't know, Jay was in anger management, and that's why we were delayed with our latest assessment. I do not have a rage problem! <sighs> Calm blue ocean. Calm blue ocean. Okay, well, let's begin with our first assessment of the first city we are assessing in our home country of Canada. Canada is the eighth largest country on Earth between Uruguay and Bosnia. Did you read that in the encyclopedia I bought you for Christmas? I skimmed through it. Moving on. Ramia is a small town in Newfoundland with roughly 500 to 600 people in it. As my friend Jason Bubblegum Hall can tell you, a small population is good because there are less people who can turn into zombies and less competition for resources in the area. It is also located on an island, Nature's Loner. Yes, the island is a good point for you because islands can be easily defended, but you do have to worry about zombies coming up from the water onto the island. It's also located in Newfoundland, so already a small population, and you do not have to worry about an influx of people coming to the big island in order to get to your small island. Ah, yes. That was something that the Isle of Lewis lost points on due to its proximity to Scotland. Sadly, my notes say that the local god industry has been shut down. Friends, I would like to take a moment here to express my displeasure with the shutdown of any religious industry. There's no need for it, especially when it provides jobs to so many. That's his cod industry, not god industry. Ah yes, cod, the clown of the sea. You're thinking of clownfish. It applies to cod as well. Our first picture is of wind turbines, and that means plenty of power for you. When you have the wind turbines, you have energy you can use. You also need wind. Well, that's kind of self-explanatory. Yes, but I'm just saying that there might be someone who sets up a windmill in his basement and wonders why he isn't getting any energy. Who would do that? My Uncle Franco. Yeah, well, your Uncle Franco also thinks the sun orbits the Earth. The, uh, the jury is still out on that one. <sighs> From our notes, I can see that Ramia has a wind-diesel integrated control system. So in terms of power, you are good. They don't have any food. Yes, they do. The ocean's right there. No cod. There are other fish in the sea. Ah, uh, that's just something that old lonely women tell themselves as they peruse dating sites. As we can see from our next photo, there is a small harbor that can be easily defended by those within the town. You will want to defend the harbor in case of zombies. And immigrants. I thought we talked about this. You promised you wouldn't make Zomsafe a platform for your ultra-conservative views like you did with Dead on You. Eh, I say a lot of things. Not cool, man. Going on, the harbor is small, you have boats you can escape on, and it looks like it's pretty easy to find. Of course, you must watch out for the dreaded giant squid. I cannot stress that enough. The giant squid is a myth. My Uncle Jebediah says it isn't. Okay, well, our next photo is of the Man o' War Hill, which is the tallest point on the island. It provides you with an excellent vantage point to see the area around the island, which allows you to stay safe from zombie attacks. Wasn't Man o' War a racehorse? Yes, it was. Does this hill belong to him? The horse and the hill have nothing to do with each other. Why is it named that, then? I don't know. I think because of a ship or something. Well, if it's for a ship, then they should have named the harbor after it, not the hill. Ships can't sail on hills. What does it matter? Well, if the entire town is up there and no one has an answer as to the name of the hill, it could result in a riot of people yelling their own theories. And if the work of George Romero has taught us anything, it's that humans are their own worst enemy in a zombie apocalypse. Your mind fascinates me. Our next point for Ramia comes from the fact that in 2007, they had the AAA Softball Regional Champions. Dare I ask what that has to do with anything? Well, they can obviously swing a bat pretty well, so essentially you have a team of individuals who could go from softball to zombie ball very quickly. Actually, that makes sense. Shelly, make a note. Jay made sense for once. Who's Shelly? She's my secretary. Why don't I have a secretary? Because you aren't the boss, and you have the announcer. Ah, uh, he smells like Tiger Bomb. He is a pitiful and disgusting creature, and there is no doubt about that. Uh, come on, boss! I'm, I'm standing right here! 
In regards to Jay's point, yes, this team can easily move in the transition from softball to killing zombies. Plus, they're athletic, which is something very important in a zombie apocalypse. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold the phone! They also have helmets. So what? If they turn into zombies while wearing the softball helmets, they'd be invulnerable to headshots. I don't think softball uses helmets. Don't they underhand a beach ball or something? I don't know. Faith doesn't allow me to take part in sports. I'm more of a horse race person myself. Which is why we no longer have pensions. It was a sure thing. How was I supposed to know the horse would run into the stands? Our last photo is of a house with a light on top of it. A lighthouse. Yes, that would be the layman's term for it. Or the actual term. Needless to say, a lighthouse is very important because zombies will be hard-pressed to get inside and you get an excellent look at the surrounding countryside. However, only a few people can fit into a lighthouse, so you may have to leave others out to die. That seems kind of harsh. It's a zombie apocalypse, bitch. Well, on that delightful note, we will bring our latest Are You Zomsafe video to a close. In all, Ramia is very well suited for a zombie apocalypse in terms of survival. First of all, you have a small population, you are on an island and you have plenty of power in the windmills. In addition, the harbor can easily be defended while at the same time, Racing Horse Hill gives you a clear vantage point over the entire region. You have ready zombie fighters in the 2007 AAA Softball Regional Champions, and you also have the Lighthouse. So, we are giving Ramia 5 out of 5 stars for survival. Congratulations, Ramia! We would like to thank Zach Green for sending us info about his town so that we could tell everyone about it, ensuring that in a zombie apocalypse, thousands of people will descend upon the town in an effort to find safety, leaving the town a wasteland of corpses and despair where the living envy the dead. If you would like us to do a zomsafe assessment for your town or city, send us an email to cjzomcast at gmail.com. You can also send us comments about our other assessments, which are available on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash deadonyou. On that note, from both Jason and myself, we would like to say so long and good luck. I would also like to say so long. What did I tell you about talking? Now go wash my cherry ride. You mean your minivan? Yes.